It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Uh, by far the longest game that I've played in the tournament, longest single game, was the 7x7 seven se seven Ages. This is also probably the most convoluted game <laughs> I've played to date. Um, which is why, and, and it ended with a tie between um, Runt and Pegasus because Pegasus was lost. I don't think Pegasus was even in 7x7 seven seven ages, though honestly I don't remember anymore. Uh, no, I do remember, she, she got lost. And then I found, I, got, I found another copy of Real People. So she was able to come back into the tournament and show her and run, may, I don't know, maybe, maybe she came back in 7 ages? 7x7 uh, seven seven ages? I don't know, I'm not gonna go down that road and think about it too much. Um, but it was this long thing and I didn't, Planning on having some sort of post-apocalyptic like death match between the two because uh, you know they've gone through this long detailed history um, in seven by seven ages not detailed but long long <laughs> history I guess I, I figured if it was long it should be detailed but no it wasn't detailed it was just long um, uh, history of like empires and all that in seven by seven ages so I thought you know let's do a postscript for their one on one. Um, where, you know, kind of fit with the history, kind of, uh, kind of did the standard post-apocalyptic thing. But instead, today I decided just to do a straight game of innovation with the green expansion. And the reason why is, one, I've just gone, I've been doing like longer and more convoluted games. I did Star Masters, Star Masters! Uh, last and the game the, the the tournament really needs to proceed it really I really can't just keep um, making things more complex I was going to combine this leg with another leg uh, of the tournament and do some stuff with that but really I think it's better just to kind of do something um, simple now I know I already did innovation with uh, with Tempest in the in a Vumpus game um, I was going to combine innovation again with maybe through the ages um, but I decided instead just to do a straight game. Just to do a straight game, nice and simple. Finish the leg out. Uh, run versus Pegasus, one on one. The one little twist, it's not really a twist, um, but the one little maybe point of interest is I'm gonna be using figures in the sand, which is going to be interesting for me, uh, partially because I always get some sort of insight about a game when I have to talk to someone about it the whole time I'm playing that I don't get otherwise. Um, and figures in the sand. I've, I've got. I've played it innovation a lot, uh, partially because, ma mainly because. Well, no, partially because I like it, and partially because it's easy to get people to play innovation. Um, it works with a lot of different people and kind of fits a good time frame that a lot of people are comfortable with. Um, and I can solidly recommend innovation. I can solidly recommend echoes in the mist. Is it? Echoes. There's echoes. There's an echoey one, the blue one. I can solidly recommend it, that, but I can't solidly recommend Figures in the Sand, which is not to say that I think it's bad, but it changes the game in such a way that I'm just very ambivalent about it. And I mean ambivalent in the sense that I feel different ways about it simultaneously. In some ways I really like it, but in other ways it has some things that bother me, and maybe I'll go through that as we go through this final match, this final bout between Runt and Pegasus. It's been several months, eh, not several, a few months since I've played with the Figures in the Sand expansion, so my qualms are not fresh in my mind, uh, nor is the game. Uh, but I, I think immediately one of the things that bothers me about it is that it, it's, in, it, it adds in figures. I mean, uh, I was talking to a, a game acquaintance and we decided that innovation was a verbose abstract. And I think that's a good way of describing the game, like what category it is. Uh, but by adding figures, it just, it, it, it goes away from that, that idea thing, you know, like innovations are all about innovations and then suddenly you have people, it just kind of throws it off. But maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I can, I can accept it as the idea of those people. Right, because people are and and individuals are an important like cultural ideal. Uh, we use them as a shorthand for this this package of goods, correct? Just the same way as we might use an in, invention as a a shorthand for a package of goods. So, 
if we have a, a person in in this game, it's really the I, I want to look at it as the idea of that person rather than the person itself. So um, since it's been so long since I played, I thought it'd be good and probably edifying for you if there, I don't know if there's another online resource to learn about the, about this expansion, to just kind of go over what's different uh, because it really changes the game quite a bit. So I'm just gonna go through this reference and see if I know what it's talking about. This is, um, That's all from the second expansion. So if we look here, this this expansion is different because it, primarily it adds two new actions, which echoes in the mist or in the smoke, echoes in time, uh, whatever the blue one is, doesn't add new actions. It works entirely with it with the the standard four actions that you get in regular innovation and just adds new effects and that's all on the card basically I mean there's a few new icons and things but really you're dealing with your meld draw achieve dagua um, figures in the sand adds two more so one is inspire uh, you can choose it uh, it's basically you get to draw but also they the cards have some effect okay and that's going to be shown in an icon whenever it's a circle like that when you inspire you get to do this particular draw action um, and the draw action is based on the stack that you choose to inspire rather than you know the straight highest number on your board so it can let you draw lower numbered cards and than than regular than usual um, and then it lets you do some super effect inspire is pretty nice uh, then you have decree which is uh, there aren't new achievements in this expansion, so you have the first, the basic five, and I'm assuming you know the uh, the brown. And if you if you don't know the blue, that's okay because the blue isn't doesn't. I mean, it it expands the game. It's a true expansion rather than an alteration, which is more what I think the green expansion is. It expands and alters. Um, so you have the special achievements there. Instead, you have these uh, I don't know, advancements. No, 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 advancements. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, I guess they're called decrees. So in order to get a decree, you have to remove three figures, and that's these green cards, and they have to be for, of different values, unless the cards say otherwise, because the cards have these kind of broad effects that change things on your board. Um, and one, what they, they count as an achievement, but they can be taken from you. So if someone else dis, does a decree, they can um, move the decree from your achievement pile to kind of the generic board that everyone can draw from. Or if it's in the generic board, the neutral zone, they can pull it to their own pile. So it's, it's kind of interesting. And when you take them, it does some super effect. You know, so we can go over that if that happens. Um, one of the most interesting things um, that can be kind of problematic, there, there's one in, like, how do you get the green cards? So how you get the blue cards, I'll go over that real quick in case you don't know that. If you, you start out with a blue card, so we can even deal it out right now. Pegasus gets one brown, Runt gets one brown, uh, Pegasus gets one blue, Runt gets one blue. They don't get to draw a green card though. And they don't start out with a green card. Their green cards are more special. You're, you're only gonna get those if the other person, well, I'll, I'll talk about the one that, that, that feels good to me and the one that doesn't. If the, other, if, if the other one copies one of your dogma effects, instead of taking a standard draw, you draw a green card. So there's, there's this great incentive now to let people copy you uh, that, I mean, they've, that incentive's boosted because these green cards are so um, valuable. They can be. Uh, you don't oftentimes want a ton of them but you want to you want to get a steady flow of green cards going. The other one, and this is one that kind of bothers me, when the the person when one person takes an achievement, the other person gets a green card. So if Runt achieves, Pegasus gets a green card, and that feels to me like this kind of super. It just feels superficial. I know the game is very abstract and doesn't really tie to a subject, but that just, uh, everything kind of has this sort of sense to it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's new, but it just feels like one of those kind of limiters, kind of a built-in limiter to the game. It just feels, um, uh, yeah. Anyway, so taken together, both of them are kind of this um, balancer, right? 
but the one is comfortable to me and the other is not. The, the balancing draw a green card if someone copies you feels comfortable to me. Someone getting a green card just because you take an achievement because you're moving towards the end goal of the game does not feel comfortable to me. I don't like it. Um, and it's, it's kind of that and the fact that there are these figures, these actual people, are my biggest, the, the kind of the, causes, cause me the most angst with the game. All right, so that's, I think I went over kind of basically what they do. The cards, we'll say these kind of like global things, right? They're not something you dogma generally unless you have an echo effect. They're just something, it's like, it says this and that is so. And it, it's, they're very interesting, very interesting. Um, I think the, the green helps me think about this, but I very much think of this, this expansion as being the woods, like you're out in the wilderness and you're just kind of, who knows? Let's see what happens. We've only gone through a turn, but I kind of just wanted to establish where you started because that feels like an important part. Uh, these first cards that we choose when we play Innovation definitely can, um, they're, the, they're the root from which the tree, uh, let's say the, the seed from which the flower, the boob from which the flower that is the game to come blossoms. So let's take a look at who we got. We have Bangle down here. Uh, that was Pegasus's. Tuck a red card from your hand, draw and foreshadow a three. And then we have the wheel, which is runs. Um, we've just seen a lot of card drawing. Neither of them are, s well, I want to say Pegasus isn't super satisfied with what she has. But it's only, you know, she's starting her second turn. Runt has some something she's going for with the wheel here. We'll see where it goes. So Pegasus finished her second turn. Her first turn she drew. This turn she melded both of the cards she had, the one she drew and the one she started with that she did not put down, which was Bangle. Um, she melded Puppet partially because she's got four points now, and then she also has three towers, so she's gonna be able to copy if Runt de decides to use the wheel again. And then she's also set up, if Runt decides to use the wheel, to achieve next turn. Because uh, she would be able to copy the wheel, get some cards in her hand, she can return cards in order to score cards, and then with the four she has, if she just returns one card, she gets one point, and that's gonna put her at five, which lets her get an early achievement. Now in doing so, she's going to um, gift Runt with at least two um, green cards, that is, if Runt uses the wheel. Runt could decide not to use the wheel, in which case Pegasus is gonna take her two turns in order to achieve. So the clock is ticking for Runt on this first achievement. Let's review how many achievements they need. I think it's eight for a two-player game with um, two expansions. Runt took a big jump all the way up to era three. She did, she melded tools and then dogmated it. Because she had so many cards, thanks to her wheel, she was able to uh, invoke tools and then get homing pigeons. So that's gonna, that's not kind of, that's not quite what um, Pegasus was planning, but Pegasus can still move slowly, uh, slower than if she had dogma the wheel towards her goal of taking the first achievement of the game. Gone through the third turn and Runt has Pegasus in trouble. She played, the, she drew a three and then played Katana. And that, if you look here, Katana takes away tower cards and puts them in her score pile. Pegasus has some tower cards here, so Pegasus needs to needs to achieve right now if she's going to do it. Because, well, yeah, otherwise she could get more tower cards down and, and attempt to block it. Those are her choices. We'll see what she does. Pegasus went ahead and did it now. She needed to use all of her actions in order to take the achievement. She could have blocked, possibly, she could have gotten up to four towers, which would have blocked the katana. Um, but if... Runt had it been able to play a card, meld a card that had three towers, she would have been able to take that lead from her and do the katana anyway. So she took the achievement. That is going to give Runt a number three leader. And we're gonna we can see how that's that's gonna be really rough on Runt and maybe a little unfair for Pegasus, in my mind, because you know Runt is in the lead. Pegasus in the standard game, she's taken the route in a, you know that you find in a two-player game where she's the big scorer, going to get some achievements quickly, whereas Runt's working on her board. But her doing that is helping Runt get ahead. We'll see. 
Runt follows up with Alhazen, which lets her, if she dogmed it, it gives, it gives her some, like, some special ability if she splays car, uh, splays, splays cards, but she does the dogma in, in order to tuck a card with a tower from anywhere. So she just took one of those. She could have also used the katana, incidentally, to score um, both of Pegasus's uh, cards with towers, but instead she's just going to tuck them. She's going to essentially take Pegasus's board away from her. That's how potent Alhazen is. Pegasus, as a result, has had to do a lot of drawing. Um, she's finally come to the point where she's, she kind of knows what she's going to do in her next turn. She, mel she drew three times in a row, essentially, and then melded agriculture. So we'll see what she comes up with. If we look at uh, Runt's side, Runt's board is looking nice. She got Novel down. That's going to let her draw a bunch of cards. She's got some scoring things going on. Uh, if she can get splays happening, that's going to give her another bonus. Uh, she can also... You know, with her homing pigeons, well, her homing pigeons aren't going to work, so I don't even talk about her, talk about it. But she's definitely got some domination for any towers that Pegasus has. So Pegasus really needs to get past era three, where those towers uh, no longer are. So from Run's impressive board here, she did some other stuff. We're going to move to Pegasus. She melded this card, metalworking, and she's going to dogma it right, right away. So Run is going to copy. Uh, this is one of those gambling cards from this, the, the basic set. Draw and reveal a one. If it has a tower, score it and repeat this dogma effect. Otherwise, keep it. So she could be offering Runt an achievement, but she's also going to be uh, depleting, hopefully, a lot of these one cards, and that's going to help her move up in age, and that's really what she needs to do right now. She needs to catch up, though she's also hoping she might have a chance to take the next achievement. All right, so... Runt gets sailing, and that's it. So then we go to Pegasus. Just gonna score that. Puts her at three. And keep that. All right, so then she's gonna also get to draw one of these. So in doing all of that, she got this kind of little extra bonus, Sargon of Akkad, and then we're gonna go to Runt. Runt was semi-offensive taking the metalworking from Pegasus. And then she melded sunglasses, which are really cool. Uh, Pegasus, for her part, she melded writing and dogma, allowing her to skip ahead from the ones to the twos. And also, since run copied, she got another green one card. Um, it's not as great to have more than one of the same age of green card because the decree requires you generally to have uh, green cards of different ages, but still she gets a little bit more of a bonus and it's more of, it's a lot more of a benefit for her to have a two than it is for Runt at this point in time. And Runt is doing really well. She used her sunglasses twice uh, to score some cards, draw some cards, and then also get some splayage going. Now if we look at Al Hasman, Al Hazen, each of her splayed colors counts as having a top card of value equal to either the number of light bulbs or towers in that color. So right now her purple top card is two, her katana is four, so she's already able to draw four just from, from what she has going. Let's see if Pegasus has any response. Pegasus is melding and dogmaing road building. So the first thing that's gonna do is that's gonna put her in era two, so long as road bunny Road, build, road Bunny <laughs> stays uh, in place. The problem with that is Run has a lot of diff couple different cards anyway that could take Road Building from her. So you can see why she would dogma it right away. Um, meld, meld one or two cards from your hand. So Run has to copy that. She can do one or two of these. And then if she melds two, she gets to trade a brown or a red card for a green card. Pegasus doesn't have any. Uh, so Pegasus will want to do that in return, and then Pegasus is going to get a bonus draw. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how all this shakes out. So let's take a look at the board state, uh, board state before that. And here we see Run's hand that she's going to have to choose from. She has to meld at least one card. Um, it might be good for her to meld the green card because uh, Pegasus is also going to dog with this. And assuming Pegasus melds two cards, and she gets to trade um, a red card for one of Run's green cards, so we'll see. Big catch-up move for Pegasus, but it was expensive. It uh, allowed 
run to get some cards at the expense of her homing pigeons, which put Pegasus into era three, which made her bonus draw three. Um, Runt was able to build up her board more though, so she has five towers in one of her colors. So now, when she draws, she's able to draw from the five uh, age. So this game could be going very quick. It could, I, I mean, it seems like it might end uh, if Runt keeps going so fast up here with one of those auto victories rather than the eight achievements. Runt took the second achievement, which is her first achievement, and then tucked the road building which had devastated her so much. Oh, not devastated her, but like monkeyed with her. I guess monkeyed is better than devastated in this case uh, so much last turn. Uh, so run, I mean, we're definitely seeing Runt has got a big lead here. And so we have all these, uh, these mechanisms that kind of bothered me that seem to be sort of catch the leader mechanisms, but they don't seem to be enough for Pegasus. So I don't know. I mean, a lot can happen still in this game of innovation. Pegasus used homing pigeons to pick away at uh, Run's score pile as well as uh, get a splay. Then she decided, you know, she saw this inspire action here. She decided she would inspire. She did that, drew and melded a one. Her masonry thus covered up her agriculture, which is kind of unfortunate. She was going to maybe use her agriculture. But at the same time, she got some more cards out of it. She got some masonry down. Maybe she can use the masonry to get the monument achievement. She's one card with towers away. I have to abort. This has been, I made a mistake that really messed up the whole course of this game. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've messed up before in the past with games and I've either gone on or I've started over. This time I think I'm going to post this just because it, it has been an interesting exchange. Um, but next time I think we're going to have to start over without all of the talking about how to play the game. Where did I mess up? Well, I've been using this Dogma and Alhazen for Runt, but Pegasus should be able to do it too. So every time Runt tucked one of her tower cards, Pegasus should have been able to tuck one of Runt's tower cards. And then Runt should have gotten a green card as a result. I mean, that's kind of big, especially this early on. It's a big mistake. Um, so we'll start over. <laughs> Uh, not not with seven by seven ages, but we'll start over with this game of innovation between Pegasus and Runt. Next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament.